everyone. Um, I am Emily Taylor here in my studio. This is Emily. Let's see. This is in studio with Emily. I do this every Monday morning at 11 o'clock uh, mountain time. And this morning, I'm just going to kind of address a few things that have been going on uh, with me creatively and this, uh, the pet, the April flower, no, the May flowers uh, um, quilt along. So I uh, just finished up on last Saturday, two days ago, the, the 22nd, the webinar about making the potted pansies. You can see I was demonstrating back there. And um, let me just, I, I think it would be fun to just kind of explain the, the overarching theme that I am, um, learning as an artist as I do this. Uh, let me let me pull this up so I can kind of show you. So um, here are two of the little pansies that I did. This one is all in one piece because I did this as a parchment pressing design. Pansies is now available as a download and the pattern is written as a parchment pressing pattern when you buy the download. It's the physical pattern on the foundation panel when you buy the physical pattern. So um, anyway, it's nice to, Delana, I'm happy to see you. Thank you for joining me. Um, I do love to see comments when you join uh, and where you're from. That's always a treat for me. So say hello. Anyway, so I think the thing that I want to leave with you today um, and I've mentioned this in a post before, but I want you to take a look at the all the variety of fabric that is in this little um, pansy. Look at the variety. There's quite a variety of fabric in all of those petals. There's variation in the value even um, amongst all of these pieces. There's a lot of pattern going on. There are analogous colors in it. Uh, and the moral of the story is, for me, Emily Taylor believes in pushing the envelope with your fabric selection so that you can incorporate, like be brave with your fabric selection. Um, don't stick to fabrics that are safe. Go outside the box and as long as all of the, the value in any of these pieces of fabric is dark is lighter than this dark value, which is kind of the identifying feature of a pansy. As long as these are all lighter than that dark section, it's going to look like a pansy, even if you select fabric that's kind of wild and crazy. So while I've got wild and crazy fabric here, when you look at this from a distance, all of a sudden it looks really rich and beautiful. And so that's kind of my tip for, for you all who might be working on the pansy or the orchid. Um, okay, so another thing um, in reference to the pansy webinar, I have not sent out the link to those who've registered. The pansies webinar was a paid webinar. Um, so I will be sending out the replay link right after this so that I can, oh, <laughs> Delena, I'm sorry. Um, Delena, it says you're from Belgium. <laughs> I just saw that comment. Where are you from? <laughs> um, okay, so anyway, I got distracted, sorry. Um, I will be sending the link out for the Pansies webinar following this live video. Um, for those of you, I've had lots of emails. I will get to those emails. I just want you to kind of remember that it's just me and my daughter. I don't work on Sundays and I worked on Saturday doing the webinar and I was tired. So if you've emailed me, I haven't responded yet. I'm getting to my emails after this and I do get to, um, I do respond to every email. So, um, the number one question is though, why don't you post this, the webinar link on Facebook? And the reason is because people have paid for it. So I'm not going to give something free to everybody that other people have paid for. So that's the number one thing. The other thing too is um, 
I've had some comments and some feedback about how using all of these different platforms is really confusing. And I want to, again, apologize for any confusion. Um, we all have been forced into using technology, which is brilliant and awesome. And I'm so grateful, as I'm sure you are, that we can connect with technology. Um, but technology does have, there is a little bit of a learning curve. So when I've done webinars, they are on Zoom. And I can't send, I can't post that link on my website. That link has to come from Zoom. And so when you register for a webinar and you and you pay for a webinar, you are given a link through Zoom. So you won't be able to find that link on my website. Um, so I will try always to make technology as easy as possible, but I do have a lot of platforms. I do have YouTube. I have many people checking in from YouTube, Facebook, um, and I have a teachable platform for my paid on demand videos. And I've got obviously the webinars that are on YouTube or on Zoom. So I just have to be able to use these different platforms. And sometimes it's it's hard to navigate all of them. I can't provide links all right on my website. So I I am doing my best. I will always try to, to make things as seamless as possible for you to find resources and collagequilter.com is the hub for, you know, that's my website. That's the hub where I am trying to make sure that, that the resources are easy to find because I am super happy to share my passion. I love what I'm doing and I feel like I'm constantly learning and innovating as an artist and, and I love what I do. And I actually love to connect with people too. And I want to make sure that I help you have success with your collage quilts and your um, textile collage projects. It really is important to me. And I'm very much a people person. I love to engage with people. So um, let's move on now. I have a winner to announce for our giveaway. Now this giveaway was happening in the Collage Quilter Academy Facebook group. If you post pictures of your progress, of either the pansies or the orchid in that Facebook group, you're automatically entered into a drawing. And all we do is just kind of scroll through those and we pick a picture and the winner um, gets a prize. So let me grab my phone because Amelia just texted me the winner. So hang on. Okay. The winner for this week is Barbara Birch. She posted a picture of her orchid and Barbara is going to win a new pair, a pair of these um, little micro tweezers that are now available for sale on our website. These are designed by Heidi Profity and I love them and Heidi has become a friend of mine. And um, so these are really, really wonderful for you know, lifting up little teeny pieces of fabric. You're going to love them. So uh, Barbara, if you're watching, will you please email me and uh, send me your address? So email me at collage quilter, emily at collage quilter .com. Give me your address and you have won yourself some little tweezers. Now we have one more week of this contest and one more week of, um, you know, talking about the pansies and the orchid patterns. And I am leaving town. <laughs> I'm leaving town with my kids, my family. We're so excited to be going on a US history tour. I'm taking my kids to Washington DC. We're gonna go to Mount Vernon and then up to Gettysburg and the Brandywine River Valley in Pennsylvania. We're going to Longwood Gardens and so, somewhat one of my one of you all sent me a, a a suggestion about what to see back there so i've added that into my itinerary some of the dupont estates i'm super excited about that valley forge and then philadelphia so we will be gone next monday there will be no live video on memorial day i hope that you all have a wonderful holiday 
and enjoy that day, the first day of summer. And um, but we will post a winner. We're going to have actually multiple winners that day um, that are going to win a whole bunch of stuff. So if you've participated and if you haven't yet posted anything for the um, giveaway, all you have to do is post a photo. It, it can even just be a photo of the fabric that you've selected for your project for either the pansies or the orchid pattern. If you post that in the Collage Quilter Academy Facebook group, you will be entered to win and we're going to select multiple winners and we will announce them on Monday. Okay, no live video, but they'll be announced in that group. And then starting in June, what I've decided to do is let me find my let me find my parrot. Hang on a second. Okay, guys, you know, I've been, I've been working on um, my critters, right? My critters, my creepy crawlies, my critters that fly, whatever. Um, I, I did finish, I think I finished, um, finished the collage part anyway of the parrot. And I'm gonna make this available next month. So it, starting in June, you'll be able to, to get the, the pattern. I need to write this pattern. And um, we'll be doing this every couple of weeks. I'll provide the, the pattern for um, each of my little, these little guys. Now, I need your feedback though. I've been, somebody suggested a block of the month. I've thrown out the idea of doing an alphabet quilt. Um, I want to know what your feedback is. I love the idea of a block of a month. So, uh, anyway, uh, let me know if you like that. And, um, and uh, sorry, I got distracted again. I can't look at comments right now cause I'm going to get to comments in just a second. But anyway, so I, I do want your feedback about whether you want this to want to do sort of a block of the month thing. Um, Oh, that does look good, doesn't it? I'm really excited about this. This kind of nailed it. This kind of is the first of, you know, I'm going in this direction where I want to add more depth and interest in the finished composition. I want more color. I want, I want it to be yummy. So anyway, that's the first one. That will be a good summertime summertime project, right? Um, that will be coming up. Um, and and then I, I also have some other stuff that I'm really excited about releasing as we move through this year. Um, I, let's get to questions now. Um, let, me, let me look to questions and answer your questions because I've seen Doris just asked a really great question. She said, would you ever consider doing a short demo on quilting a project on your domestic machine during one of these live programs? I loved your class Saturday. You do an amazing job and are so patient. Thank you for these. She says, I love my Karen K. Buckley scissors that I ordered from you. I also do a lot of applique and what are a difference they make. No more little hairs of fabric to deal with. Also, I went through my stash and guess what? You were right. I had a, a lot of fabric for my collage stash. Great to hear from you, Doris. Thank you so much. Um, yes, here's the thing. I do need to quilt all of these things. I have not quilted this yet. I have not quilted orchid. And part of it is because I just get so busy. I want to just create, I want the fun part for me is this stuff. And I have a bunch of things I need to quilt. So I think we need to, we need to work on that. I need to work on that. Um, and share with you kind of some live videos about quilting. Uh, I'm hesitant to do that live. I, I guess we should, if that's what you guys would like. It's just so loud to listen to a quilt, a machine in a live video. Um, but I do want to share that with you. I apologize. I got sick. I got my second COVID shot and it knocked me out for a day. And I've just been teaching a ton. I taught about six workshops this month. And so that's been super hard. And we've been trying to release the fabric bundles. 
it's just been crazy busy. So I'm really looking forward to playing catch up in the next few weeks. Um, so yes, we will get this stuff quilted. I will definitely share everything I can about the quilting process, what I do with them and whatnot. Um, so I appreciate that suggestion, Doris. Uh, I will demonstrate, I think what I'll do is I'll demonstrate one, either the pansies on my domestic and one of them on my long arm machine. I don't know if I'll record it as a video yet or if we'll do part of it live. Um, we'll just have to see. But I, I think that's what we'll do. I'll do one on my domestic machine and one on my long arm machine. Okay, so let's um, let us now look at questions. If you have additional questions, please post them. I'm going to go through any questions that you have and answer them without taking too much of your time because I know I, I don't want to be boring. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. This is funny. I do have a Delena that is from Belgium. And there's another Delena who said, I'm not from Belgium. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. Two of you there, two of two of you here. Okay, great. Uh, let's see here. Barbara just asked, do I have a webinar this Saturday? Nope, Barbara, I will be in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. So I'm not doing a webinar this Saturday. Thank goodness. I've had, that's another thing. I've been teaching every single Saturday for the past like six weeks and I don't get a day off and I don't get anything done when I'm teaching. I love to teach, but I need to have time to get my stuff prop, my stuff quilted and get my house cleaned up and all that jazz. Okay, so um, thank you, Amelia. I appreciate that you appreciate this Monday presentation. Somebody, uh, Somebody just said, I love your shirt. Did you make it or sell the pattern? Thank you. I love this shirt too. It is from Anthropology. It's probably not available anymore, but I love it because it, it is totally me. Just lots of pattern and color. And so thank you. I appreciate that. I did not make it. I have made shirts, but I won't. I don't have time to make shirts anymore. Dang it. Okay, so I've answered Doris's question. Thank you, everybody. We will have a lovely vacation. I will be thinking of you, and I will be taking lots of pictures in Longwood Gardens. So I will be inspired and share some fun stuff with you from, from my trip. Okay, so block of the month, somebody's saying block of the month. Um, I love the idea. Okay, so yep, we'll talk about block of the month. All right, that sounds that sounds good. And I think <laughs> so somebody pointed out, and I've thought of this too, that a block of the month for an alphabet quilt would take two years and four months. <laughs> so we're not gonna do that. Um, we'll either make it bi-weekly or we'll scale back the size of the project. So um, I'll figure that out. But I do love the idea of the block of the month so that every month we have a very doable project that's not too big. And these you know, this size, like you can get this, I got this done in a day. And how fun is that to be able to just be done in a matter of hours? That's, that's a fun thing. So I, I think a block of the month would be great. Um, Elizabeth said, be sure to eat a cheese steak sandwich in Philly and check out the Betsy Ross house. Oh, I, I didn't know there was a Betsy Ross house. Thank you. I will. I will look at that. Okay, just again, oh, somebody said, can you show us your fish? Yep, here's the fish again. Now, 
Um, let me just tell you what I'm going to do with the fish. Doesn't that, isn't that so cute? I love the orange on the blue background and these kind of make me think of bubbles. And I did buy some cheesecloth. So I, you know, I wanted something that was super, um, transparent and I might go buy some tool or something, but I thought those, I'm going to make bubbles. That's what I'm going for bubbles on the goldfish. So similar, you know, that's kind of what I'm going to be doing with each of these, with each of these little critters is kind of figuring out the context of the animal or the critter. And since I have the fish up here, he's going to have bubbles. He's going to be in the ocean. So there's the fish. Uh, Somebody, somebody said she loves to quilt more. So she has the opposite problem. <laughs> I, I, I wish I had the problem where I like to quilt more. I like to do the collage better. Okay. I'm just beginning. So here's somebody that says, I'm just beginning a collage following your guidance. So my question is, can I post an older collage I did of a view of San Francisco? So thank you for this question. This is a great question. Um, I have two Facebook groups where I invite you to post your work. Uh, number one is the Collage Quilter Facebook group. That group is open to posting anything that you create, whether it's using your own ideas or somebody else's patterns. So please join us at the Collage Quilter Facebook group where you can post those pictures. So your, your quilt that you've done of San Francisco, that would be awesome. We would love to see it. In the Collage Quilter Academy Facebook group, that is reserved specifically for people who are working on my patterns. I find that it's a really nice resource to talk to other people who have made the same patterns. And we often will do those the quilt alongs in the Collage Quilter Academy Facebook group. So that group is specifically for people who are, po I, I only want things that are um, from my patterns in that group. And the reason is because it's helpful to other people who are working on or have made, you know, have made the same project. Um, I have another question here. Can you design a big butterfly? Yes, 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 yes. That is actually, I started that. It's in the works and I will share more about that as we move along. Maybe it will be in the block of the month. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay. So Esperanza just asked a question. Could I go to that? I live close by. Esperanza, you're going to have to clarify because I'm not really sure what you're talking about. All right, I think I just answered your questions, Vicki. The Facebook groups, number one, Collage Quilter, which is also the name of my business, is one Facebook group where you can add anything. Collage Quilter Academy is where you can post pictures of what you're working on with my quilts, and that's a great forum to ask people who've worked on the same projects. And I am very present in that group, so I can ask you or I can answer your questions in that group as well. Um, let's see. Leslie asked, can you tell me what is your book and your patterns? So my I have two books. One is called Collage Quilter Essentials for Success with Collage Quilts. I'm actually working on updating that book and putting out the second edition because I've learned a lot since I wrote that book and I want to include it in that book. So that book is available now, but I will be updating it. And then uh, the second book is called Take Flight, Fun with Textile Collage. And in the Take Flight book, it's specifically about making the birds. Um, so there's a raven, a crane, an owl, a swallow, did I say quail, um, a duck, and it's using, it's talking about my parchment pressing method. So it provides step-by-step -step photos 
of making those projects using the the parchment pressing method. So those are my books. You can find all of my patterns at collagequilter.com. Now, as a reminder, I have two types of patterns. The first type is, um, and you'll want to be aware of which type of pattern you're, you're purchasing. This type of pattern is a foundation panel pattern. It has the design pre-printed on a piece of cotton. The idea is that you'll just apply fabric right to that uh, foundation panel. The other type of pattern that I create is a parchment pressing pattern where a smaller element is created, peeled off the parchment paper, paper in one piece and then applied to a different background. So these will be parchment pressing patterns. Um, so anyway, there you go. That's a little bit about my book, my patterns. I will take lots of pictures at Longwood Gardens. And let's see here, any other questions? Um, oh, I like that idea, Elizabeth. She said you could spell quilt for the block of the month and one quilt square. I love that idea. I, I really do want to kind of play with the letters. So I like that idea. Um, thank you for that. Hummingbird, I, I actually have been looking at photos of hummingbirds because I would like to do a hummingbird. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, Gettysburg. No, Gettysburg is not a class. Um, as you probably already know, Gettysburg is the, it was the battleground for the turning point in the Civil War in Pennsylvania. It's also the site of the Gettysburg Address by President Abraham Lincoln. And so I am taking my children, my family, to Gettysburg on a historical tour. So that's why we're going to Gettysburg. Sorry, you probably came in late. I just mentioned that I was taking my family on a, on a vacation. Uh, let's see. Yes, Karen, post your post your self-portrait in the Collage Quilter group. Uh, okay, here's another question. Do you have any plans to travel and teach in the near future? If so, where? Great question. I do love to travel and I love to teach. <laughs> so if I can ever combine a trip to trap to teach, I do that. Um, you know, the majority of this year is stuff that's online. Um, I'm trying to think if I have any teaching. I do have a class that I'll be teaching in August in Las Vegas. Um, I have a live class in September in Oklahoma. I have a live, live workshop in Wyoming in October. And so those, I think, are the only live workshops that I have going on. You can find information about that in my, on my website if you go to the events tab on my website. Um, that will give you a, a list of all the classes and workshops that I'm doing. And if any of them are open for registration, I normally will put a registration link there. Um, also, speaking of live classes, I am putting together a live workshop in Utah next summer. Um, we will be doing it up in Midway, Utah, which is just this beautiful hamlet surrounded by mountains there. And it's just lovely. So if you have interest in coming and joining me at this live workshop that I will be putting together probably in June of next year. Please go to my website. Also on the events tab, you'll see there is, I need to know how many people might be interested in attending. So I'm taking names and email addresses for people who are interested in that. And as I get that put together, I will put that out to them first. So um, in addition to doing collage quilting all day, we will, um, I, for anybody that's interested, I love to hike and bike and I know all the trails around there and 
We will eat out, have wonderful food there. It's a darling little place. It's also very close to Park City. There's wonderful shopping, world-class shopping, world-class art galleries in Park City. And um, my sister-in-law is the mayor of Midway. So we might have some special, some special perks. <laughs> so uh, anyway, let me, let me know, uh, go to my website, sign up on the in on the events tab if you are interested in joining me at that workshop that live workshop okay so next question is what determines which technique you use this is a really great question so and she's assu i'm assuming you know am i using a parchment pressing pattern or a foundation panel how do you decide which one is the best there are a couple ways that I figure that out. So number one, uh, if you look at the horse pattern, that is a pre-printed foundation panel and there are lots of shades of gray in there. And the more shades of gray that I'm trying to interpret, the more complex the pattern is, um, the easier it is to just leave it on a foundation panel rather than trace out every single little teeny thing. So for some of those complex, patterns like the horse or the grizzly or adoration, they work much, much better just as the foundation panel. Um, I also like to, so even this one, I think that's a little bit more than I want to trace. If it's something I don't want to trace and it, it works really well to, to translate onto um, a piece of, you know, printed, print it on a piece of fabric. So that's one consideration. The other consideration is um, the parchment pressing does have some great benefits. Now, one is that I can do, you know, just a, a, a single, an individual element. And if I don't really have an idea of how I want to incorporate this into an entire composition, that's kind of nice to be able to allow me the freedom to play with that and create my own composition. So if I want to give you the ability to create your own composition and create your own, the own size, your own size, sometimes people like to have a smaller size quilt. And so that's when a parchment pressing pattern is really super useful. Um, the, the foundation panel is it's really fun. It's super, super easy. That that's my. I love to just sit down and do something on a piece of fabric. It is very, very easy. And so, a lot of my beginner patterns are uh, with a pre-printed foundation panel. So, cactus, sublime, felicity, clementine. Those patterns are really great for their beginner patterns and their fantastic on a foundation panel and that's how they're sold. I do make a lot of downloadable patterns available, especially for my international customers. And um, so if you see something that's a foundation panel, that's also a download, if you have the option to purchase it as a, as a foundation panel, that's what I would recommend. The reason that I, do it as a download is just as a convenience for those people who's um, when shipping becomes really um, expensive. So that there are a couple considerations. I think I answered that. Hopefully I did. Okay. Um, somebody just asked, is the bee pattern available? The bee, the wasp, it's actually a wasp. It will be available as part of this uh, set of, of, patterns there. I am working on a dragonfly too. Okay. Elizabeth, thank you for the info about Longwood Gardens. And Delana, you're in California. So we have one from Bel uh, Delana from Belgium and from California. Very cool. Uh, okay. Elizabeth, thank you for the info about the DuPont estate we will be visiting. Um, 
<laughs> somebody said, sorry, accidentally sent an angry emo emoticon, not on purpose. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I get lots of angry crap all the time. And I just let it wash over me and disappear. Uh, let's see. Okay. A cicada. Okay. So here's the cool thing. Somebody suggested doing a cicada. I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I don't know if it's cicada. I think it's cicada because I live in the West, we don't have them. I am super excited because the cicadas are coming out um, in that area of the country. They're the 17 year, they, they only come out every 17 years and this is the year and I think they're starting to emerge. And so we're super excited. I hope that we get to hear the crazy cacophony of noise that those cicadas Bring. So anyway, kind of fun. Um, let's see. Ellen just asked, were you doing geraniums? Um, I might have said something about geraniums, but if I did, it was I misspoke because I it's my pansies and they kind of look like geraniums a little bit. So I have not done geraniums, but I will continue with flowers. I do love flowers. Okie dokie. Oh, so they said the cicadas are out now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they look like. So I don't know. Anyway, we're in, I, we're kind of excited about that. Okay. Um, anyway, thank you, everybody. I think it's about time to wrap this up. It's great to, to chat with you all. I love to see who joins us each week. And um, I hope that this has been a little bit helpful. I, this was kind of a wrap up session, but we'll, I, I do want your feedback about more what you'd like to see in this live video. So I love the idea of a demo, a quilting, I'm glad to get your feedback about the block of the month. I think we'll work towards that. And if you ever have suggestions, please email me, emily at collagequilter.com. Uh, I love to hear your questions and your suggestions. And um, so yeah, we will uh, we will check back. I will see you again in, live in two weeks, the first Monday in June. Uh, and I want you all to have a, a happy holiday next Monday. Enjoy yourselves. Now stay safe and be kind to those around you. Know that there are people among us who need our kindness. So be the good. Love you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.